going back to our idea of prerequisites, if you're trying to run a software program, let's call this to a Turkish ghetto, you can practice doing the Turkish ghetto all you want. If one of the articulations utilized in achieving the Turkish ghetto doesn't have the functional mobility to do what you're asking it to do, there is no way that movement will go well. It just cannot. I'm doing the opposite. I'm saying the software takes care of itself as long as the articulations are able to do what you're asking them to do. So when I say there's no corrective exercises for movement, movement corrects movement, what I mean by that is if you want to move better, the first job should be make the articulations do what is necessary to achieve what you define as a good movement, and then practice movement. So if you were to go online and you were to see some weird movement that I do, I don't train those movements. I train my articulation. I train my joints to be able to do whatever it is I ask of them. And then I practice the movement. And by practicing the movement, the nervous system comes to terms with how to do that movement you're asking it to do. And because it has the hardware to accomplish it, the, the speed at which you learn to do the movement is incredibly increased. You don't have to go and start to make compensation patterns for things you're unable to do. So a good example is overhead squat. You can practice an overhead squat all you want, but if your ankle doesn't dorsiflex to allow your knee to go past your toes by about a good four, five, six inches, no matter how many times you practice the overhead squat, it's not going to go well for you. Because your body has to compensate has to change the software in order to compensate for hardware that is incapable of doing what you're asking it to do. This scientific analogy of the brain is like a computer led to the concepts that movements are stored as programs. That's a very common thought process. There's a motor program. So there's some kind of pattern sitting up in your brain that will discharge when you think squat. I want to squat, so I'm going to squat. And somehow that there's a program that gets discharged in your body. Now, if you look at more recent literature, especially this person here by the name of Latash, what you start to realize is the movement doesn't actually exist. So there isn't a squat program waiting in your brain to get run. Every time you squat, the way that your body dictates to the muscles and everything in the body as to what to do, it changes every single time. So what does that mean? That means that if I squat once and I'm somehow able to read all of the EMG output of the muscles, there might be a certain firing frequency or firing order that allows me to squat. But if the same person squats a second time, the order will be completely different. Which is really against what most people are taught. Now, let me make this even more confusing. The better someone is at a movement, the more variability in the way they accomplish that movement. So if you take a very skilled mover and you get them to squat 10 times, the change between every single rep in the order of muscular activation, the number of neural discharges, the impulse, and all of it will be dramatically different the better you get. If we go back to the analogy of the program, the thought was everyone has something stored. The better you get at moving, the more tightly honed that program gets. And that is not what's found. In research, they used to think of this variability as noise. There's something wrong. It doesn't make any sense. The person should be better at this movement. But now they look at that noise, and they see the noise as a great benefit. Because the noise, the alteration means the person has a greater amount of freedom, great, more degrees of freedom to accomplish that particular exercise. So what is movement? If movement is not a program stored, then movement is better defined as the brain or the mind that generates the goal. And then on the spot, it determines how can I achieve this goal? What is an efficient way that I can cause this movement or this goal to be achieved? and then it discharges those, those neural impulses. Now this is good because based on this model, if there's any external factors, any external variables thrown at you, the body is able to adapt to those external variables and take a different path because there's lots of paths to achieve the same movement. Now if you're a poor mover, 
I would say you're not familiar with this particular thing that you're asking me to do. You don't have as much degree of freedom. So if I throw a variable into the mix, your body is not able to compensate for that variable fast enough, and then you don't achieve your goal. Someone who's a very skilled mover, I can throw in as many variables as I want, and the body is able to adapt to these variables. That's what movement is, and that comes from dynamic systems theory, which is a framework for modeling movement or athletic performance, emphasizing coordination and control of the human movement system. When your body's about to execute a movement, it already has a three-dimensional mapping of where your body is in space. Then it has to run through calculations of a complexity that nobody in the room will ever understand. It's, there's far too many variables to account for. It calculates how to do the movement. And you know how it makes these, these calculations in your decision? It has to make it based on what your body is able to do, which gets me back to the concept of hardware. If you don't have the hardware, let's say you don't have <coughs> that great amount of dorsiflexion when trying to do an overhead squat, your body is not able to utilize that movement in the plan of trying to achieve the overhead squat. It can only use what it's able to do. Which means that the most important factor for improving one's potential or capability to move is to increase the hardware. Give the body articulations which have incredible degrees of freedom so that the body can alter its movement path or plan on a second by second basis, which is what movement is. It's altering as variable inputs come into the body.